Hi everyone, my name is Simon and today we'll be reviewing this new aerial rendering. So uh, let's get started. Um, as you can see, the rendering is of really, really high quality. So I think we're going to focus on things a little bit different today, which is going to be mainly about uh, tiny details. Because the thing is, when you're dealing with such a like large scale image, you, well, the first thing you have to focus on is basically the overall feel you have. But once basically the atmosphere is set, you have to focus on tiny details that will make your image really stand out. So first thing we're going to talk about still is the composition. So um, the composition in terms of balance is sort of OK, even though I think there's a little tiny thing we can change and it comes from the rule of third I know it's just like it's a basic rule you don't have to follow it all the time but still it does give you a quite a good sense of uh, how to balance work in an image and here you can see that the horizon is sitting quite high on the in the image and that's make that makes that the sort of breathing space or blank space in the image is extremely small in terms of ratio in the image and that means that the, the images are actually quite packed. So what I would suggest is actually uh, making it a little bit bigger, sort of square-like actually. So if we have the horizon sitting on the upper third of the image, we'd have something like this and add the, the sky. So as you can see, this sort of um, makes the building sit a little bit more in the actual uh, city, whereas before it was a little bit too cramped in the actual uh, surrounding. So that's something that I think makes the image a little bit more legible. Second thing we're going to have to focus on next is basically all the tiny details that you have to keep in mind uh, when doing like such a large scale image. It's going to be like, I'm not going to put any hierarchy in it, but still it's mainly going to be regarding lighting um, and composition and reflection basically so first thing we're going to focus on is basically the shadows as you can see there's a that's something i actually noticed afterwards is that most of the foliage here is uh, done in post-processing which is quite uh, impressive in, in the sense that there are a lot of uh, vegetation and it's not like so like it doesn't stand out so that's that's a really good job still there are some incoherencies that makes it like not that perfect so the first one is going to be regarding the shadows because once you have a look at the shadows of the foliage and the ones of the um, entourage you end up with some weird thing because basically the um, the lighting is not really it doesn't really make it's not really consistent throughout the whole image because here you can see it goes this way if you look at the guys here it goes a little bit downward and if you look at these guys it goes upward again so basically you have to be a bit careful when you're integrating your people so that um, the shadows are consistent throughout the whole image so that's the first thing um, Second thing is going to be regarding the foliage. Here we have two problems. First one is going to be like this guy. Basically, the problem with post-processing is that if you don't have a big enough library, uh, you're going to end up using the same model, uh, not even like not twice or three times or four times, but like uh, 10 times, <laughs> dozens of times. And the thing is, it's quite noticeable, especially when it's uh, all in the same uh, place basically so what you have to be like you can sort of use it but be careful to sort of uh, alter the like maybe flip it and things like that and the thing is it's also a little bit too bright compared to the rest of the foliage second thing regarding foliage is to be careful regarding the resolution because well here you can see as well that it's super repetitive which is not really good um, 
second thing I was talking about is the resolution because as you can see here we have something extremely low resolution here and something higher resolution here so you have to be careful like you it doesn't you can use lower resolution foliage but you have to make sure that it sort of sits properly in the image basically you're going to lose you're going to use lower resolution elements in the background and not in the foreground except if you maybe use like a blur or something in the foreground but still you have to be careful to have some sort of consistency in this thing um one thing that i'm going to mention quickly is the fact that uh the script that i've written to sort of get the um, shadows of cut out people can also be used to get the the shadows of uh, all your surrounding trees you just have to rewrite the script a little bit and make it work for the another folder so you can keep that in mind when you're integrating uh, a lot of trees so that you can actually get a proper shading for all of them and not sort of uh, forget some so that's another tip another thing that we can talk about quickly also is the sort of uh, another thing you're going to notice when you're doing post-processing is that it's quite hard to to make reflection make sense when you don't have actually anything to reflect because basically here you can see uh, it's reflecting some sort of a green park but that's not really what's happening in front of our building here so that there's no it, there's no real relation between the facade and what's happening in front of it so that's something you might want to be a little bit careful with that comes from the fact that most of the trees are post-processed so that means they're not in the reflection but still if you want to really make like take into account all the tiny details you have to actually rework all your reflection which is quite a bit of work but still that will make quite a difference another thing that i've noticed also is even though the blending between the sort of background photograph and the foreground 3d is quite good there's still some tiny problems we can notice such as um, this guy here sometimes the blending is a little bit weird because we have like strange opacities so here you can see there were a building but we cannot see see it anymore which is a little bit problematic and one thing as well that you have to be careful still talking about resolution is what's happening for example here as you can see in the foreground we have like a like this is a render so it's quite high resolution and sort of sharp second like middle ground uh yeah we have this uh low resolution image which i think is i'm not sure it's a render or maybe it's been blurred because of the depth but whatever it's as you can see there's quite a difference in terms of resolution but behind it we have again something with much higher resolution and behind it again we actually have something with lower resolution so what you have to be careful with when you sort of integrate uh, a foreground render in a background photo or the other way around is to keep a sort of consistency in terms of resolution and lighting so lighting is good here because um, as you can see the facade here has sun on it this one as well and this one is in the shadow and this one is in the shadow so that makes sense but in terms of resolution we have some sort of a problem here so that's something that you have to take into account basically the idea is to uh, the further you get the more noise you add on your render and all less contrast you add because the further you are from the camera the less contrast you get so that's some sort of a stepping thing that you can get with the z depth pass quite easily and that way you'll blend it quite efficiently with the background so that's something else uh, there was also a problem with this scene here it's like really not noticeable much but as you can see here there's a like the you can see this part here basically has been copied twice so this is like it took it takes a little bit of uh, attention to notice it but still like once you notice it you're like ah so one thing you can do here is actually instead of uh instead of duplicating duplicating it sorry you take it 
uh, take the whole thing and use the content aware scale, which is in edit and content aware scale. That way you can sort of uh, make it span on the whole, like uh, the whole width, which can be quite efficient. So the other thing you can do is actually just like uh, erasing parts of the duplicate. So maybe get rid of this guy and change tiny bits so that you don't really see this obviously that this is the exact same image duplicated. So that's another thing. Um, there was one last thing uh, still regarding how to like in terms of consistency between foreground and uh, background is to be a little bit careful with the the lighting, the sharpness, and especially the colors or hue. As you can see here, we have like, you can sort of see it, but it's more obvious with um, with these guys on, uh, this guy especially. Here you can see in the background we have like, um, the facade in the sun is sort of orange and the facade in the shadow is sort of bluish. And this, we don't really get it in our foreground, as you can see here, we're more of a green and blue, not blue, but purple. And it's not even consistent throughout the whole rendering in the foreground. So what you have to do is actually um, just use a cover adjustment layer. So oh, one tiny thing, if you ever get this uh, grayed out, just go, uh, no, not here, just go here and click on curves display options and click OK. And then you can move these guys as well again. So here what I did is just go into the um, blue and I popped up a little bit the blues in the in the image. So the difference is a little bit like it's not uh, that uh, obvious, but still makes it blend a little bit better in the image. So as you can see, if I put these filters on again, we have like a tiny difference, but it sort of sits a little bit better in the foreground. Also, like as you can see, there's a alpha channel here because uh, you obviously still want to keep the yellow on the on the facades that are in the sun. So that's pretty much it. There was something else, yeah, regarding the um, water here. As you can see, there's like the texturing on the overall is really is really good and convincing but there's this guy here that is actually quite weird i'm i'm not even sure it's been rendered i think it's there's some sort of post processing happening here but it's not really not really nice and i think the reason is twofold the first one first reason is because the hue is extremely weird i mean it's extremely saturated and the blue doesn't seem really uh, natural and and the problem is as well that it's it's mostly in the shadow, but it looks super um, bright. And the second thing is that you can actually s like there's some sort of weird ripple effect that is not really convincing. So I guess it's just a matter of re-rendering it and having some like the the set out the setting sorry of the material checked out a little bit. But beside that, that's a really really nice rendering. So. As you can see, it's not much of a difference, but I, I think it does breathe a little bit more and get more um, sort of a consistency throughout between the, the render itself and the background image. So yeah, hopefully you've learned some interesting tips there and uh, see you in the next teardown. See you guys, bye, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.